Good morning or afternoon, depending on when you're doing your English. Um, fourth graders, we're going to do a, just a quick review of your information in your English book for your review and for your test that you need to take this week. So, um, first of all, let's look at what we have here. We've got a pronoun. Well, what is a pronoun? A pronoun takes the place of a noun. So, words like he, she, it, we, they, all pronouns. Okay, um, examples here, Sarah asked Brett and Lee to go to the seashore with her. They spoke to Mrs. Lansky. She gave them a special book. It was about sea life. Now remember, singular um, pronouns are words like I, me, you, he, him, she, her, and it. They are the words that are going to be singular, one person. Plural nouns, of course, mean more than one. The word you is in both, so you need to look at the context of the sentence to see is there more than one person they're talking about or just one person, okay? Um, so that's the basic, what is a pronoun? Then you had subject pronouns. Subject pronouns are pronouns that take the place of the subject. The subject of the sentence, who or what is the subject about? A key, that's a girl, so it's she, Justin. It's a boy, so it's he, a key, and Justin, they, two people. Nikisha and I, we. When you have an I in the subject, you've got to think of it as being um, the idea that you are part of it, so it's we. Um, when you have a subject pronoun, um, also, if you have to look at something like this, Matt, and Matt said to Selena, Selena found a ladybug. You found a ladybug. Matt said to Selena, you found a ladybug. Not she found a ladybug because she's talking to that person. And so you'd say you. Um, always try and put the pronoun in and read the sentence and see if it has the same meaning as when you said it with the word that was there. Okay. Um, watch out for quotation marks. When there's a quote, you have to make sure that it's the right person. Um, Matt said to Selena, she found a ladybug is different than Matt said to Selena, Selena found a ladybug. Okay, so just be careful with that idea when you're doing your subject pronouns. Object pronouns. Object pronouns are pronouns that can be used um, when, that are following the action verb. Okay, so when you look at these action verb fed action verb helped showed gave and if you notice the highlighted parts are after the verb so in that case we're using words like me you him her it us and them a little bit different than the subject pronouns so mr rossi fed them james helped him James showed the pony to Rachel and me. He showed it to us. Then James gave the pony a carrot, it. Okay, animals are considered it. We don't say he or she, we say it. Okay, although we do like to humanize them um, in the sense of English, it's going to be the word it. Okay, um, and so just a reminder of that piece. All right, writing with pronouns, you're not going to see on your test, so we're just going to kind of skip over that page. Usage of I and me. Um, remember, I, first of all, we always come before, or I mean after the person. We have others first, then us. So Kim and I, Kim and me. Um, remember, it's, it's that idea that others come before ourselves. So the order... Um, of using I or me there. When you look at the location, um, when you talk about a person, again, uh, I study, not me study. Mrs. Ling teaches me, not Mrs. Ling teaches I. Okay, so careful with the location of the word. Uh, that can help you to remember whether it's supposed to be me or whether it's supposed to be I. Usually, if it's towards the beginning of the sentence, before the verb, we're going to use the word I. If it's after the verb, we're going to use the word me. Okay? 
So before the verb, I, after the verb, me. There is an exception to that, but you don't have it this year. Possessive pronouns, those are showing ownership. My book, your book, his or her book, its bone, our time, your pen, their house, things like that where you show that ownership. And we can change those. Pam feeds Pam's pet. Pam feeds her pet. She fi fills the pet's dish. She fills its dish. And you notice they take the the out in here because it's not she fills the its dish. You're talking about the pets. That's the, um, the owner. The boys. There. Okay. Um, keep an eye on that type of thing. Is it singular? Is it plural? And again, then um, who owns it? And those pronouns, possessive pronouns, are going to take those places. All right. Contractions, you have a list. Um, make sure your contraction's in the right spot. Make sure you're using the right words. Okay. Um, yeah, and just look at your list here to help you out with things. Um, next year, you get into things with this where it would be you would, you had, he would, he had. But this year, it's all just had over here. So um, you don't have to worry about coming up with is it a different word than what's listed. Okay, so those are your two lists of contractions with pronouns. Pro uh, pro pronouns and homophones. Um, the apostrophe is going to indicate that it, it is um, for this. It's, it's is the belonging to, which seems opposite of what we normally have. Uh, like if we say the girl's dish, um, it would be apostrophe S. But when we're talking about pronouns, this pronoun means belonging to it. Okay, it Take its picture. Okay? So the, just remember if you have an apostrophe, you're talking about it is. They are, apostrophe again, you're having two words that make up that word. There, the I can be like a person. If you think of the I as a person, it belongs to them. It's theirs. Okay? So T H E I R. And then there has the word here in it, and here is a place, and so is there. Okay? Um, also, you can think of it as, um, yeah, uh, that's that's the easiest way to remember it. Here, the word here is in the word there. You are, and then you're belonging to. Okay, you are or you're belonging to. And then you can pick which one is the correct one. And you'll definitely have to know that for your test. And then we talk more about homophones in here, uh, just a different pairs of homophones uh, that you have. Here with your ear. Um, blue the color you know that and then the other blue plus tense of blow so it looks like blow only with an E. Week, seven days in a week. Um, each day is going to be um, the same type of thing so two E's in the middle as opposed to EA not strong um, and then hour meaning the possession and hour 60 minutes uh, that time has the H in front of it. Okay. Um, your homework is going to be on the review, is doing with the review here. Um, in your books, if it doesn't have short wings underlined, that's the word you're replacing. A penguin has short wings. Um, and would short wings be what word would that replace? What word would replace that? Um, and that's the words. That's the word they want you to replace. Short wings. Okay. Um, on your paper, if you look at what you have here, um, you're going to just fill in the pronoun, the word that replaces the underlying word. Okay. And that's how it's going to be down here too. You're just going to write what word would you use to replace Uncle Bill. Okay. Um, Words like he, she, it, I, me, you, them, us, those type of words, okay, those pronouns. Remember the page you can look back at is right there to help you to know where should you go back and look. 
you're going to um, do that same thing all the way through uh, 21 so just taking and replacing the word and then finally for I and me you're just going to write the correct choice into the box that's listed there on your worksheet okay on the back side here you have 22 through 26 so just write your answer uh, which choice would you use and put that in the box okay um, that's the review for the first um, the first day's page and then tomorrow's when you look at tomorrow's work possessive pronoun um, you're gonna write the word that would replace the camel's hump a llama looks like a small camel without blank hump if it's the camels, what would it be? Would it be your, his, its, hers, that type of thing, or her? Um, so you would change that word. And again, you can look at 214 for your choices of your words. For number six or section six, you're going to write the contraction. So write the contraction as it should be um, with the apostrophe in there. And then section seven, write the correct choice that you would use for 39 through 47. Just write the one word down on the lines. Um, and then you have your proofreading part, um, which should be written out for you. It should look like this on your paper. And you just have to, um, you're looking for m three mistakes using I and me. So you're going to look for the I's and me's and see um, maybe it's an I, it should be a me. Maybe it's a flip-flop where you should have the me and, or the I last instead of the name um, last. Then you're going to have four mistakes in contractions and their homophones. So in other words, it might be I-T apostrophe S when it should be I-T-S. Or it might be Y-O-U apostrophe R-E when it should be Y-O-U-R, okay? That's the type of thing it means by hum the homophones there. And then one other contraction mistake. One other contraction mistake would be something like, um, I don't know, uh, he's, he's going to the play and it's uh, heel or something like that. So um, maybe the apostrophe is missing. Maybe the apostrophe is in the wrong spot. Um, maybe it's the wrong word. Um, but right over here, it gives you a list to first I's and me's. Did you find three of those pronouns and their homophones? Did you find four of those contractions? Did you find one of those? All right, so that's kind of like your proofreading checklist that you look and see. Did I do that? Did I do this? Did I do that right? Okay, um, hopefully, and that's uh, for two days work um, and that's your a little bit of your review. Um, remember, you can also practice uh, some of that on Grammar Blast. If you go to my website, you'll find under web links, you'll find that. All right. Have a good day, guys.